Hello, this is Paul Cheney with Spartan Design University and a quick introduction to the responsive web design with HTML5 and CSS3. This is an introductory course which will give you a really good foundation in what responsive design is and how to do it and implement it so that you understand what the code is behind the um, site itself. It's designed to be really easy to follow along. The uh, agenda for this next couple minutes, we're going to talk about mobile milestones. This is something you should know. The course goals, um, how I teach the course, the importance of coding, my qualifications, and we'll take a look at the completed sites that you're going to build. First of all, March 2011 was a huge time. It's when phones and tablets combined outsold desktop computers. Fall of 2013, tablets alone outsold desktop to, to uh desktop computers. We're in a new world. Things are changing really rapidly. The size of the display, which previously was growing, is now suddenly shrunk to the tiny handheld phone, as well as a huge, ginormous um, monitor. The goals of this course are, of course, to help you understand various ways to implement media queries so that your website will play and work well on phones all the way up to big desktop computers. We're going to be coding a couple of responsive website pages and we'll be implementing some advanced CSS techniques and tricks which I think are really cool. How I teach the course. Of course there's instructional videos which provide the majority of the information that you're going to need. Each unit builds on the knowledge that you learned in the previous unit and each unit comes with an example site at the end which you can view, download, play with, whatever you'd like. The value of coding. I use Dreamweaver for all of my professional coding and I use the code view. I don't ever go into the, the WYSIWYG view very often. Um, I really like Dreamweaver for several reasons. First of all, it has code completion so that if you start typing something, it'll bring up a list of suggestions you can very quickly select one and with one or two keystrokes type an entire word. It also has the ability to instantly FTP once you save which is standard with most WYSIWYG editors and it has code hinting so that when I enter a custom class or ID it shows up in a list as I'm typing in the CSS so make sure I don't have any typos. My qualifications I've been teaching web technologies for 15 years I run my own web design company and I did have the opportunity to present at Adobe Max last year on this topic. And I'm an instructional designer by trade. All right, let's take a look at some examples. Here on Spartan Design University, we have a link to example number one. This is a single page site. And this is the desktop version that you're looking at. We've got um, a gradient out here on the edges. We've got an image that's going to scale. And then we've got two columns side by side. Now let me pull up the um, tablet version. This is what the same site looks like on a tablet. Notice this coloration out here is gone. It fills the entire screen because the tablet is smaller. And then we've got stacked. We have our news and our tweets instead of side by side. Now let me bring up my phone. There it is. Here's now the same site on a smartphone. We've got the tablet version here. I'm going to put that out of the way. So notice we've changed the navigation. So instead of being a horizontal navigation bar as we had on the uh, tablet and desktop, it's now a stacked. This is a very simple one. I would only use this on a site that had maybe three or four at most menu items. We'll show you a, a more advanced technique later on in a different unit. But this is a, a good start. It looks very phone navigation-y. Um, the image that was a part of the screen here is now taken up the full screen followed by the text and once again the news and articles are stacked as they were on the tablet and then we conclude with our footer so that's the three different implementations of this exact same website viewed on a desktop a tablet and a 
phone. Now, there's one more. Let me get this out of the way. We'll go to this example. So this is the advanced CSS one you'll be learning. It has um, examples of embedded fonts, gradients, shadows, all this. We teach you nine different things that are really cool. Notice on the desktop, though, our page is limited to this center white section. And anything beyond that, we go ahead and put some eye candy out there of a, a star um, planet and then a, a spaceship up here in the corner. These are links that simply scroll down the page. So this is, once again, a single page. We've got some um, CSS borders that go on here to give us this nice rounded look that's not a graphic. And then down here at the bottom, we use a hover state because you can do that with the mouse to kind of give us a fancy gallery, as well as this ribbon footer, which has not a graphic in the corner, but a div that's done with CSS3. Now I've got the same site showing up here on my tablet. Notice that these images, because there's no hover, there's no CSS to try and make them enlarge. And I've removed the this fancy edge and the star pattern from the background because I want to maximize the use of my tablet screen. I've also got this the horizontal navigation is the same as it was here. The phone though is a little bit different. I've gone to two columns. Once again, this is a um, introductory class, so we're doing a very simple styling of those navigation buttons. We've got the same information with the same um, fancy CSS border there, all the way down to the footer, which once again just displays those same images. But notice in all cases, they're 25% the width of the page. And that's all CSS is doing it. We just added a little bit of fancy stuff here on the desktop. So join me for responsive web design with HTML5 and CSS3, and we'll learn how to build these different um, sites and exactly what it takes to make a site responsive.